A few years ago, while I was still in the seminary, I went with a group of seminarians on a mission trip to a Native American reservation called the Tohono O'odham Nation. Uh, the nation is located in Tucson, Arizona, and it straddles the U.S. and Mexican border. While we, were, while we were there, we ministered to the elderly, visited patients in the hospital, and brought Holy Communion to Catholic inmates serving time in the prison there. Uh, some of the natives on the reservation were Catholic, but many were not. In fact, many were not even Christian. One afternoon, a group of us decided to hike up a mountain uh, called Babakiri. At the base of the mountain, we ran into some of the natives who lived there. They were kind and welcoming. We told them who we were and our plans to hike the mountain. They didn't object, but they asked us not to disturb their god, Etoy, who lived somewhere in a cave on the mountain. They told us that Etoy was their creator and that while they had never seen him, every so often they would hike the mountain themselves and search for him. It was an interesting experience to say the least. Now, the religious beliefs of these natives were similar to other non-Christian religions. You see, for them, the search for God starts with the individual, begins with the person. But for Christians, the search does not start with us. For Christians, the search starts with God. In other words, it is God who pursues us, who seeks us out first. It's not the other way around. And so we see this in our first reading today, where the citizens of Nineveh are leading sinful lives full of pleasure, noise, probably concerned with popularity, world achievements. Yet their lives were void of meaning and lasting happiness. Of course, this shouldn't surprise us because we see this happen over and over again in Scripture, right? When persons rebel against God's plan, it almost always leads to emptiness and a lack of fulfillment in the end. And so through Jonah, God goes in search of the Ninevites because he loves them and he cares for their happiness. And we see a similar thing happen in our gospel today in that Jesus is going about doing the things that he set out to do, namely to call persons into a relationship with God. He sought out the apostles, he pursued them, and he invited them. Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus called, and they responded. And he called them not because he needed them, but because he wanted to give their lives meaning, purpose, and to give them a share in his redemptive work. And you know what? Our Lord is searching out for us as well. He continues to reveal himself to us, to communicate to us constantly, daily, hourly. But there can sometimes be a problem, and the problem is not with God, right? The problem is with us. You see, we are not always listening. We sometimes fall into the trap of filling our lives with noise and distractions to the point that God's calling out to us, his communications to us, get lost, and so we don't hear him, and so we can't respond. Catholic author Matthew Kelly writes about this in his book, Rediscover Catholicism. It's Kelly's opinion that silence is one of the most important ingredients in the spiritual life, and he talks about it in terms of the classroom of silence. And so in his book, he writes, quote, our modern world is spinning out of control and one of the chief contributors to the chaos and confusion of our modern age is noise. We are afraid of silence. It is in the classroom of silence that God bestows his wisdom on men and women. And if we think about it, Matthew Kelly is probably right. When we fill our lives with the constant use of our phones, computers, and tablets, when we're constantly being stimulated, God's communication can't get through to us. It gets drowned out. If we want to hear God, we need to have some silence in our lives. We need to have at least some quiet time to create a kind of interior space that we can hear God's voice 
when he's trying to speak to us, when he's trying to communicate to us. And this can be something uh, as simple as spending 10 or 15 minutes with God at home or in the office. Maybe it's spending a little quiet time in Eucharistic adoration. Uh, If the weather is like it is today, maybe go on a walk or a run without listening to music or podcasts. Unlike the natives of the Tohono O'odham Nation who are searching for their creator, our creator is searching for us. He is searching for you personally. He loves you personally, and he continues to tell all of us how much he loves us and that he has a plan for our lives. And we can become keenly aware of this reality so long as we are willing to listen and to spend at least some time with him in the classroom of silence.